Somebody has to take a lead on green partnerships, climate change and tackling the fight of climate change and against climate change. And what better when you see a woman in leadership role? I'm being joined by Denmark's Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen uh, joining us here in New Delhi. She's here for the bilateral meeting between India and Denmark, a very fruitful meeting. If I could uh, steal a phrase from your ambassador in New Delhi who said, this is the greenest summit ever. But globally, if you could tell us, what does this green strategic partnership mean? How is it a template for developing and developed nations? I think it means a lot because we have now to move from all the words, from all the speeches, from the targets and the goals to concrete results for people and uh, for the fight against climate change. And therefore, I think we need partnerships. The Indian-Danish Green Strategic Partnership is, I think, very special because we are two very different countries. I mean, you are such a big country with so many people living here. We are such a small country. We have uh, different traditions, a different culture, but we share some of the same values. We are both democratic nations, and we really believe that we need to do more nationally and globally when it comes to climate change. So the Green Strategic Partnership is, I think, good for India and Denmark, of course, and for fighting climate change, but also globally, because partnership is a very easy way, I think, not, not because it's easy, but mm -hmm. it's an easy way to actually show some of the concrete results um, of all the words and, and, and our way of thinking. There's a template now in the Green Strategic Partnership that uh, Denmark and India have put together uh, in that working as a developed country with a developing nation. And we speak of the larger perspective of the Paris Agreement, looking at how to go towards net zero. How do you see the two countries, how do you see developed and developing nations work together to achieve not individual country net zero targets, but global net zero target? Um, your Prime Minister Modi has, has put it this way, that Denmark has some of the skills, but you have the scale in, in India. Um, and it's, it's correct that we have had a lot of experiences because we actually started the green transition more than 40 years ago, especially when it comes to renewables. And one of your focus um, uh, areas now in India is renewables and its wind energy. Uh, it's a good decision you have made, uh, also with some very ambitious targets. And it's one of the areas where Danish companies and specialists have most experiences. So to be very concrete, when it comes to renewables and when it comes to wind energy, we have some of the experiences and y you really have some of the ambitions. We need a, a, a strong partnership when it comes to renewables, but also when it comes to water and uh, water management. Um, so just to give you two examples on, I think, where the partnership can give some concrete results. Hmm. Madam Prime Minister, I know that um, when we're tackling climate change today, it also has to do with corporate and business. How do you see companies from Denmark working with India in this sector? And do you see uh, them finding it easy to work with the Indian administration? I'm talking about ease of doing business because climate change also is a part of the business circuit now. Of course, and, and, uh, and I think we should be uh, very frank that this is also about uh, not only businesses but also creating jobs. Yes. Because I, I recognize that worldwide there is a lot of also fear that climate changes will mean that it's not possible for countries to develop, that you will not be able to earn enough. Um, and people will be left behind without a job. Uh, for example, if they work in areas today, uh, coal uh, and other examples where we need to uh, reduce the activities. So uh, if, we, if we want, and I really think we should insist on that, having the support of the people for this green transition, we have to make sure that social justice and security and welfare um, and sustainability goes hand in hand with the green transition. So therefore we need to create jobs. You need to create more green jobs in India and I have to do the same in Denmark. Uh, we have had 
Danish companies in India for quite a long time. And they are very happy, I know, about being here. And many of them are also planning and expanding their activities. When you ask me directly, is it easy to be in India? Mm -hmm. um, I know that they are happy about being in India and they, that they would like to have more activities. But I think sometimes uh, the administration can be a bit difficult. So that could also be a, a focus for the two governments to make it easier for Danish companies to be in India and actually also the opposite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, when you're in India and we speak strategic spaces, we can't be far behind uh, in our conversation on the issue of strategic, but vis-a-vis -vis China because supply chains are important. Uh, Europe is very important, but the world is waking up to the fact in a COVID era that uh, we can't be dependent on one country or the other. So again, talking about the same circuit, how important do you think countries like India, like Taiwan, really are when it comes to becoming key parts of the global supply chain? The, the climate crisis shows how fragile we are, yes. uh, nationally, locally, uh, globally. The pandemic, COVID-19, has shown exactly the same. And therefore, we cannot depend only on one country. I would like to see India playing an even uh, stronger role on the global scene when it comes to supply changes, when it comes to climate changes, but also when it comes to um, filling in uh, as the world's largest democracy and one of the largest countries in, 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 in all. So uh, when it comes to climate changes, but also when it comes to uh, living in harmony uh, in, in our global community, because that is what we aim to do. Um, I would like to see India play a, a bigger and stronger role, and we would be very supportive uh, for India's role, for example, in the UN. The joint statement that I read very clearly specified a few very important areas that the two leaders, that you and your counterpart, Prime Minister Modi, really touched upon. Indo-Pacific was a very important part of that conversation. How does Denmark view a more safe and secure Indo-Pacific and India's role in it? Making sure that your regional surroundings are safe um, means building up alliances, I think, between those of us who share the same values. And I consider India as a very a good friend of Denmark and Europe, and as a s strong partner on the global scene. Um, and therefore, the alliances also between India and Europe has to become stronger. We had um, just some few months ago um, a meeting between India and the European Union uh, on video, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because of, of the pandemic. Um, and I think we should uh, support that relationship as well. But being safe and securing our safety of our people can only be done in a rule-based international community where we play by the rules, respect them, and uh, that democratic states and states with democratic values get even closer together. I know my time is absolutely running out before I let you go. Afghanistan is an important uh, country. Um, being a woman yourself, looking at how women are being now treated in Afghanistan, how important is it to ensure an inclusive administration in Afghanistan? And was that a major part of your conversation? Were you briefed by India? Of course, we had uh, a discussion about Afghanistan, and we already started it when your Minister of Foreign Affairs visited Copenhagen some few weeks ago. Uh, the situation in Afghanistan is terrible um, in general, uh, but especially when it comes to the rights of women and young girls. And I really fear that what we have seen in, in the last years, you know, women attending university, uh, girls playing football. Uh, um, you remember uh, the painting in the, in the streets of Kabul with girls showing their hair and have, having equal rights and beautiful faces. 
that they will all be thrown back to the uh, dark ages. to the dark ages uh, and to a violent regime uh, without any human rights. And therefore, the world needs to stand together uh, in, uh, of course, uh, demanding an inclusive uh, uh, government, as you said, but also in direct support to girls, women's rights, human rights in, in general, and humanitarian aid, because the Afghanistan people are suffering. They were already suffering before uh, what took place some, some weeks, months ago, but uh, the future will probably be even worse. So, uh, of course, we discussed uh, Afghanistan, of course. And finally, human rights is a very important part of conversations between Europe and the world globally. Um, you say India and Denmark share democratic values. Do you see India um, being as democratic as um, Denmark wishes it to be? There are certain criticisms that come from across quarters uh, when it comes to certain areas, including Kashmir. But we've seen a lot of support coming from Denmark, India's way. Does that, uh, that, does that support continue to stay for India and on Kashmir? First of all, I really think we should be aware that you cannot... Um, you cannot compare uh, Denmark and India totally because our starting points uh, and the challenges we are facing are so very different. I remember one day uh, during the pandemic, your Prime Minister Modi, uh, we had a, a, a call, a, a very good discussion on the phone, and um, Modi congratulated Denmark on our results when it when it came to COVID-19. And I said, please, please don't say that because everything is so much easier in Denmark than it is in, in India. So we have to be aware of comparing, I, I think, our two countries. I think we are two nations sharing the same values. We are having the same goals when it comes to a democratic development of our countries. Of course, there are some differences. Uh, we should be able to discuss them. And, um, and gladly, we have been supportive of, of India when it comes to different uh, questions uh, through time and history, and, and we would like to continue that cooperation. On that note, Prime Minister Matt, many thanks for joining us here in India today. That's the Prime Minister of Denmark speaking exclusively to India today, but also one of those rare leaders who's taken on the challenge of climate change and intends to take it forward even during the COP26 in Glasgow. Many thanks for joining us here.